All right. Leading things off, our first guest is the author of the novel, Doing Hair, and a contributor to the Bronx Memoir Project. And she joins us to talk about uh, what inspires her passion for writing. We welcome to the show, Pauline Binder. Pauline, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Now, Pauline, you've been doing this type of work for some time. Tell us about it. Yes, well, I've been writing, you know, um, ever since like I was in high school. I wrote poems and uh, short stories and things like that. Yeah. But um, then I got into other things. I had to my I had my family and uh, other things, and I had to I had, I had a career, so I kind of let it go for a while, and then I started writing again. And um, I, for this novel, I started writing it. Um, I think in 98, 98. Uh -huh. and um, it won the, pro the first prize at the Bronx County on the, on the arts. They had a first chapter. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that chapter. After that, I, I continued to write. I had an age, I got an agent, but they were, you know, you know how it, they are. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So Fast forward, I joined a writing group at uh, uh -huh. Kingsbridge Library, yeah. and in that library, um, I met a guy named Ted Machinsky, and yes. he had, he, he's the author of, um, yeah, and I, he said, you know, he has done, he had done this, so I said, okay, I will try it, and I had my son and his uh, fiance put it together, uh -huh. and, and we there and here it is. <laughs> um, we so, published it last year. Yeah, so that's that's great. So it took some time to do it, but as long as you got the work done. Yes, and I I didn't do it. You know, I wasn't writing continuously because I got kind of discouraged after yeah. the agent and blah blah blah. So you know, I didn't uh, really. It wasn't like a tw a twenty year you know continuous writing. It was. Yeah. What was your biggest motivation uh, in becoming a writer and an author? Well, um, I see things that I would like to, that I like to write about. I write poetry and uh, just the experiences of life. You know, I'm from Jamaica and- um, Yeah, well, man. We, uh, yes, man. <laughs> 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 and we, uh, you know, all those things, I just, I got inspired by the environment and, the, yeah. you know, everything, everything. And you're a social worker also? Yes, I was a social worker at Metropolitan Hospital, Wards Island, and uh, I, I left those jobs to take a job as a training specialist with the, the um, Workers' Compensation Board, and yeah. then I'm, re I'm retired, no, I'm retired from that. Yeah. So how has all that work in the past helped you in putting together your book? Yes, I think, uh, you know, in social work, one of my, uh, it, it informed my character, like Charlene and Neva. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my work in social, in social work kind of allowed me to see them and to mo motivate um, them and one of the things that they do is per you know your personal how they handle personal things personal like emotions um, their reactions uh -huh. to men you know things like that I could go into it a little deeper I think because of my social work background yes and yeah. so do you have a, an all-time favorite book that has uh, helped motivate you in the past well, you know, the book, I, I really, two books, really. Um, Sula by Toni Morrison. Mm -hmm. um, I read that a while ago. And I, when, it, when I read it, it was so right and so touching. You know, I always remember that book. I don't remember the plot of the book anymore because I read this a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And the other book is The Prophet. Ah, all right. Have you taken anything from those books? Yes. I mean, that, uh, that you, uh, a type of style or anything from those books? 
Well, um, I I'm not sure about style because of um, the, the kind of work that I do, but I take inspiration, especially inspiration, inspiration from like the prophet. Um, yeah. I use a lot of that it, inspiration in my poetry, um, you know, and with um, Toni Morrison, I try to not be like her, but to get inspired by her, the way yeah. she writes so vividly, you know, that vividness. Yeah, I like it's that. Okay if you, it's okay if you, you like her, but they won't show because everybody has their own individuality and your own personality will come out. Yes. Yes. Now, um, can you talk about the essay contribution to the Bronx Memoir Project? Well, the, the uh, contribution is, um, I wrote, a, I, um, I, when I came here in, in 1964, um, I, I write about how different things were here as opposed to Jamaica and the goals and um, th goals and responsibilities and how you these things changed you know changed mm -hmm. me and over time and yes. that's what I write about um, I don't know if you'd like to hear just a little bit of uh, the Bronx memoir project just a touch yes just a touch. 30 seconds there <laughs> Back in Jamaica, we had the idea that America was the promised land. Everyone who came home from America was dressed to the nines in stylish clothes and shoes. They had smooth complexions and spoke with a twang. They would give us children a shilling or two after they had ch changed their American money for Jamaican pounds and shillings. They were, they were a lot more prosperous and generous than those who came home from England, or so it appeared. All right. I would like to read more. <laughs> okay. Where can we go to find out more about uh, the work that you're doing? Well, um, on Jamaicans.com, they have a lot of my, my work is on there. Uh -huh. um, and uh, the Sunday Gleaner, um, some past Riverdale Press poems and uh so on you know i don't oh. have unfortunately i'm not in the media in a social media yet anyway that's right and, and you gotta <laughs> stick to it you know how things keep on moving but thank you guys so much thank Pauline you. Binder, author doing hair and other projects in the works thank you pauline thank you mm, okay all right we'll take a break right here i got more coming up next on open 105.5 